Hello, Andy. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you, Seth? It's good to see you back. Yes, it's good to be back with you again today. It's been a while, hasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, it has been a while, but everything just goes so quickly that just even last week seems like years ago. But um, yeah, it's good to have you back and it's good to be back ahead of uh, another York Hall show or two York Hall shows um, as we're having a, uh, a bit of a celebration, a landmark moment for Revolution Pro Wrestling um, as we reach our 10 year anniversary. Yes, 10 year anniversary, two nights of Rev Pro action. So we've got so many matches to talk about today. And before we get into that, just how has it been for you preparing for two such big shows and putting these cards together? Well, I think the weekend's a bit cursed in some <laughs> respects. Um, I've had some health issues in the lead up um, and we've had uh, a lot of uh, enforced changes to the cards, um, which haven't, haven't been ideal. Um, mm. But the reality of the situation is, as I'm sure as we run through the cards, you're gonna see is that we have got great nights of wrestling action lined up for you. And I genuinely believe that they're going to deliver on a big time scale um, because it's what Rev Pro is all about, um, adapting and moving forward. And that's what we've been doing consistently um, for the last 10 years. Um, and it's going to be an intriguing weekend. It's going to be a chance to see some new faces shine. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's going to be an exciting two nights of pro wrestling. Um, and it's, you know, it's always like in the build up when you're like, oh, this has gone wrong, that's gone wrong, this has gone wrong, that's gone wrong. And then when you get there on the night and it all comes together, that's when it all becomes um, worthwhile. And that's what uh, gives you that kind of buzz um, and excitement. So um, I'm, I'm personally very excited um, and I think we're going to deliver again two exceptional nights of pro wrestling. Okay, well, first up, we have Connor Mills versus Tony Deppin. Tony Deppin, someone that really impressed us before main inventing three shows. And now he's back here against Connor Mills, someone who has a lot on their plate um, on Saturday night, competing twice, doing the double duty. So how do you think this match is going to go? Tony Deppin maybe has something more to prove now coming back to FPRO? Um, well, I think it's going to be a very interesting uh, contest. I mean, both men have got s something to prove in the sense of um, for Connor Mills, it's al almost like um, he's doing exactly what his tag team partner and best friend, Mike Loku, has, has been doing since um, we came back here from lockdown, essentially. Um, and that's um, focusing his career in two different paths, that tag team career as a part of Destination Everywhere and that singles career as the undisputed British Cruiserweight champion. Um, we've seen tensions um, perhaps between the pair um, or perhaps we've had people um, speculating there's tension where perhaps there isn't. Um, but really, I think what goes uh, with, without saying is the fact that Connor Mills um, has been supremely underrated throughout this whole run. Um, and I mean, it's, it's very easy to do when you look at how, um, you know, what a figure Mike Loku is in terms of everything he's achieved, the history that he's made, um, his work ethic, the legacy that he's been carving for himself in Revolution Pro Wrestling. Um, and look, here we are, we're talking about a Connor Mills match and we're already talking about Mike Loku. Um, mm -hmm. So this is why Connor Mills has uh, a lot to prove and he definitely wants to go out there and be able to show that he can get it done on his own. Um, and with Tony Deppen, um, as you alluded to, his main event is the three previous um, shows that he appeared from appeared on for Rev Pro um, back in May. He's someone who personifies exactly what Revolution Pro Wrestling is all about. Um, and, and across our 10 year history, um, we've been known for bringing in um, guys who are, um, you know, um, bubbling under on the, the independent circuit. And if they come um, and they perform well, um, 
and they show us what they're all about, which is exactly what Tony Deppen did when he was here in May, um, then we bring them back and we give them more opportunities to shine. Um, and perhaps that links into someone else we're going to talk about later on in Speedball Mike Bailey, because he's someone who follows that exact ilk. He's someone who was brought in for an, as a, as a, for an opportunity. We all knew how good he was, but he proved it each and every single time he's been in a Red Pro ring. And that's exactly what Deppen did in those three um, performances before. Um, and I think that what Tony Deppen is going to want to do is take it that one step further and start picking up those big victories and pushing towards um, championship gold. So both men hungry, um, both men with a point to prove. Um, and to me, that's all. The, and, and given the level of ability of both men as well, um, that's all the ingredients you need for um, what promises to be a classic. Mm -hmm. Well, then we have Shota Umino versus Yorosuji, but this is a strap match. So they will have to touch all four corners consecutively to get the win. Now, these are two former best friends who are now enemies um, and going into this such a, a tough match. So who do you think between the two of them might have what it takes within them, who wants it to defeat the other more in a match like this? Well, as Gideon Gray says, uh, in Yota Suji, he's instilled killer instinct. In a match like this, a strap match, you're going to need that killer instinct. And of course, it was a leather strap which was introduced by the Legion, um, where they get, gave uh, Shota Umino a real beating um, with the leather strap at the 229, brought it back into play in Southampton, and uh, Shota Umino had other ideas. Um, and uh, made a bit of a fall out of Gideon Gray. But trust me when I say Shota Umino ta has taken what Yota Suji's done in turning his back on him very, very personally, to say the least. Um, Shota Umino partnered with Suji in the Great British Tag League. Um, he became a temporary member of the Legion. He did that because he saw the situation that, well, that he thought his friend Yota Suji was in. Um, but really all it did was play into the game plan of Gideon Gray and uh and the legion um so it's going to be an interesting match it's the first strap match which either men has ever participated in um so you know in terms of strategy how do they approach this one who knows but i'm sure gidgeon gray's got a few um tricks up his sleeve um but i really really believe that especially after the events of london and southampton um the intensity in this rivalry is going to be upped um, and I think you're going to see fireworks. I think it's going to be unlike their previous outings. And it's, it's interesting because we've been we've seen it escalate from from their very first outing, which they where they compete against one another as friends um, to their second singles encounter where they were enemies. But now it's even more personal um, and you add that leather strap into the mix. And, yeah, it's a combustible situation. Um, but it's like I say, I, ca I can't pick a winner. Um, and I feel that. It's going to be interesting to say the least. And I believe it's the first ever strap match in Revolution Pro Wrestling history as well. So making history um, as we, uh, we celebrate our history. Well, next up, we have two very exciting prospects in our women's division, Maya Matthews versus Chantelle Jordan. And this is for a shot on night two against the Southside women's champion, Kanji. So you tell us a, a bit about these two women and who you think might have the edge here to take a, advantage of what's on the line. Uh, yeah, so this contest is being dubbed as a fight for the future. Um, and the reason is, uh, well, quite simply, it is a fight for the future because both women are the future of professional wrestling in this country. Two very, very talented individuals. Um, you, you asked me who had the, who has the edge. Perhaps Chantelle Jordan because um, she's been plying her trade for a, a lot longer uh, than Maya Matthews. Maya Matthews is a product of the Portsmouth School of Wrestling. Um, she's someone who joined us and joined the teenager class. Um, in the Portsmouth School of Wrestling has worked her way through to the adult class. Um, you know, you see her go from uh, the kids class to the teenagers class to the beginners class to the advanced class um, and progressing. Um, and, and really um, you can see that she's dedicated and focused so much of her life to this. Um, 
that she really understands professional wrestling. That's why there's the acceleration that there is with her in her career. And that's why she's looked so impressive thus far. Um, but I'm telling you, this is the biggest stage she's had. Um, and it's going to, she's passed every test so far with flying colors. Um, but like I say, this is the biggest stage that she's had. And, uh, we talk about adrenaline dumps. We talk about pressure environments. Um, you know, Chantel Jordan's been in more of those situations than Maya Matthews. That's why you'd perhaps give her the edge. But, you know, if, if people, you know, people like, for example, Rhea O'Reilly, you know, wrote off Maya Matthews and Maya Matthews was able to pin her. Nightshade, the same. Uh, Kira Kamara, the same. Um, so, you know, write Maya Matthews off at your peril. But like I say, these two are two of the most exciting prospects um, in the UK right now. Um, I genuinely believe that the world should know who they are. And this is a first step um, towards that happening. And then we have the undisputed British cruiserweight champion in the line, uh, Francesco Kira versus Luke Jacobs. And Luke has said that he wants to be a fighting champion and beat Michael Oku's record of the most defenses in the shortest period of time. But this is a tough, challenger he's coming up against in Akira. Well, let's make no mistake about it. This is a world-class challenger he's facing in Francesco Akira, one half of the IWGP Tag Team Champions, a man who defeated Speedball Mike Bailey, uh, our Summer Sizzler event, um, a man who's done nothing but excel each and every time he stepped foot in a Revolution Pro Wrestling ring. But the thing that Akira has on his side right now, which he never had previously in Revolution Pro Wrestling is he's now a member of the United Empire. We've seen what he's done for the careers of TJP, the great Okan, Jeff Cobb, and of course, Aussie Open, aligning themselves with Will Ospreay. You align yourself with the best, but we always say you're the average of the person you spend the most, uh, the five people you spend the most time with, or United Empire, a group of killers. And it puts some if, if I can borrow a phrase from our undisputed British heavyweight champion, it puts them on another level. Um, and right now, each and every member of the United Empire is competing on another level. And Francesco Akira is absolutely no exception. But in Luke Jacobs, we have the most, perhaps, should we say, uh, dangerous um, competitor we've ever seen in the cruiserweight division because he's got the power of a heavyweight. He's a big, big cruiserweight. And he had that thing when Ethan Allen got injured, he was either going to be, um, you know, he, he was flirting between the two divisions and he was either going to be a small heavyweight or a big cruiserweight. But it's in the cruiserweight division where he found his most success because he found, first of all, he's got the speed to match all the cruiserweights and the car to go with it, but also... He's got the power of the heavyweights and he's able to hit so much harder than anyone else in the division, which makes him the perhaps the most unique competitor to ever step foot in the cruiserweight division. He's also got acceleration in spades. I've never seen anyone change through the gears like Luke Jacobs does. Um, and, you know, he's got he's, he's got killer instinct and he's got the intensity to match. Um, so this is why it's going to be such a, a classic encounter. Um, between two of the best in the world today. Um, this is a type of match which, which gets me excited. This is the type of match um, which, again, Revolution Pro Wrestling has built a reputation on. Um, and I can guarantee you um, that this is a type of match that people will be talking about for a long, long time to come. Um, don't bet against Luke Jacobs. I think many people wrote him off. Many people thought it'd be impossible to dethrone Michael Oku and break that that streak, the longest reigning and most defending undisputed British cruiserweight champion of all time. And I tell you what, though, the one thing that um, Luke Jacobs says he's going to do, he said, look, there's an asterisk against longest reigning because of the pandemic. Um, but the one thing Luke Jacobs says he's going to do is he's going to rack up the most offences in the shortest amount of time. He wants to be a fighting champion. He wants to make history. And when you've got so many young men and women fighting for their legacy, um, you know, we get to reap the re re rewards as fans of professional wrestling. And as a fan of professional wrestling, Akira and Luke Jacobs gets me very excited. It's going to be a hell of a contest. Well, speaking of Michael Oku, we then have the strong open weight tag team championship, Aussie Open versus Destination Everywhere. 
as we said before, Connor Mills is doing double duty on Saturday. So you spoke a little bit there about maybe some of the rumors of the tensions between Destination Everywhere. So how do you think that could play in on Saturday, especially with Connor having already wrestled? Well, listen, I'm not one to get involved in that kind of speculation because personally, I've never bought into it since day one. I felt that, um, you know, look, lockdown changed so many people's perspectives um, on the world. You know, it put it put everything into perspective. You know, there's more things, uh, you know, there's nothing more important than friendships, relationships, you know, um, with other fellow human beings. And I think that's something that Connor Mills realized. And that's obviously something that Mike Loku realized because he's willing to accept his apology, he's willing to welcome him back into the family, so to speak. Um, and people have asked their questions about Connor Mills and where his loyalties lie. Um, you know, for uh, as long as I can remember since they reunited with one another. But look, each and every step of the way, Connor Mills has proven himself to be loyal to Michael Oku. Um, the only significant thing that I really think that you really mentioned was the fact that this will be Connor Mills' second contest. Because look, Destination Everywhere failed on two previous attempts to defeat Aussie Open. The first time they lost their undisputed British Tag Team Championships. The second they lost, the second time they lost their opportunity to compete in the finals of the 2022 Great British Tag League. This is Destination Everywhere's last crack of the whip, so to speak, at Aussie Open. Um, and they feel that third time could be the charm. They want to make history. And we're speaking about people fighting for their legacies. That's what my cloak is all about. Um, that's what Connor Mills wants to be all about. Um, that's certainly something that Aussie Open are definitely about, and we'll get into them in a second. Um, but this is a real opportunity for um, Connor Mills and Michael Oku to make history. And once again, for people to look at Connor Mills with the same admiration they look at Michael Oku with, the heart, the grit, the determination that it's going to take for Connor Mills to, first of all, wrestle a killer like Tony Deppen and then go on to compete in that tag team match against Aussie Open. It, you know, hats are going to have to be tipped to Connor Mills for that effort that it's going to take to, to be there on that level. And look, when we talk about Aussie Open, we talk about the best tag team in the world. Um, I know they don't have the British Tag Team Championship. And I think that Sunshine Machine will even go as far to tell you is what they're doing right now in their lives is they're trying to earn that title of best tag team in the world. And when we talk about night two, we'll talk more about Sunshine Machine, but they know in their heart of hearts and everyone knows in their hearts of hearts to be the best tag team in the world, you have to prove it on a consistent basis, night in, night out. Night in, night out. Now, Sunshine Machine were able on their best night to defeat Aussie Open on their best night, but that was one night. They need to do it night in, night out. That's what Aussie Open have been doing consistently, and that's what led Aussie Open to the strong Openweight Tag Team Championships. And now, Aussie Open, the type of schedule that they want to run, they want to emulate their boss, their leader um, in the United Empire, the assassin Will Ospreay. Um, they want to emulate him with that type of schedule. So, Sunday, Providing they're successful in this contest, they're going to be de defending the strong tag team championships in America, you know. So um, this is what Aussie Open are all about, making history, fighting for legacy. Um, and when it's all said and done, they want to be the tag team. Not, again, look, best tag team in Britain, sure. But they want to be the best tag team in the world. And they don't just want to be a part of the conversation. They want to be undisputed. And this is why nights like this Saturday night at York Hall are so important for them to get that first offence under their belts, um, you know, on UK soil, in the historic York Hall Bethnal Green, the site of so many of their triumphs, um, you know, it's going to be a special one. Um, and again, the two previous times at Destination Everywhere and Aussie Open have competed against each other. It's been nothing short of spectacular. And I believe that this Saturday's match could well, with the high, high stakes of those uh, strong open weight tag team championships added, and the fact that the wrestling world is going to be watching, um, you know, I think this one could well be the best contest of the three. Um, and I'm absolutely pumped to see it. Um, you know, when you've got four guys with the ability, the determination, the desire of Aussie Open, 
and destination everywhere. You can't expect anything but great results. It's going to be a fantastic, fantastic professional wrestling match. Well, the main event, Will Osprey versus Speedball Mike Bailey. This is guaranteed to be an incredible match. And Will, we've seen him everywhere recently. He just competed in the G1 final against Okada. He has a match coming up in AW in the Trios title tournament. And now here he is the day before his defense of the Undisputed British Championship against Ricky Knight Jr. taking on Mike Bailey. So I've got to ask, is this really a wise decision for Will Ospreay, who's been globetrotting and carrying that British flag all over the world, doing so much to then take another match against someone as tough as Mike Bailey before his big championship defense on Sunday? Now, look, I personally don't believe it is the right move. Um, but anyone who saw the G1 finals and saw the look on the face of Will Ospreay after being defeated by Okada again knows that Will Ospreay needs a confidence booster. Will Ospreay needs um, to remind himself that on his day, he is the best wrestler in the world. And it seems with Okada, he's got this kind of jinx. He's kind of in, he's, he's, he's let Okada get into his head. Like he's not let any other wrestler ever get into his head. And I think that for Will Ospreay, this is going to be an important contest mentally for him. But is it a wise move physically? No. <laughs> Because Speedball Mike Bailey is one of the most dangerous and physical opponents um, that he could ask for. Um, he's got those educated feet. He's got those knees which are made of granite. Um, you never know whether he's coming or going. And he's so, so quick. And he's one of the few men that can probably match Will Ospreay for speed in the ring. So... It's going to be a very interesting contest, to say the least. And in fact, it's going to um, match Speedball's debut. Speedball, Mike Bailey's debut in Revolution Pro Wrestling was at York Hall Bethnal Green, and it was against Will Ospreay, a very different Will Ospreay. It was a Will Ospreay who was just returning from winning the G1, from, sorry, from winning um, the best of Super Juniors, um, from riding that flow of momentum. But right now, He's facing not that same Will Ospreay, not the aerial assassin. He's facing the plain out assassin who's returning from the heartbreak of the G1 finals. So the complexity of his contest is completely different to that first time around. But without a shadow of a doubt, Speedball Mike Bailey and Will Ospreay are two of the best wrestlers in the world today. And I don't think there's anyone that can argue that fact. Look at the body of work both men have had in the year of 2022. Very few men can boast that, you know, that, that um, caliber of professional wrestling match. So really what we're doing is we're putting these two together and we're guaranteeing you a fantastic professional wrestling match. But I'm telling you right now, the one real benefactor in that contest is going to be Ricky Knight Jr. who's going to be he's going to be there on um, on the Saturday night and he's going to be licking his lips because uh, essentially he's going to be looking to pick up whatever pieces are left um, come night two but I'm telling you right now look every single match we've just run through I'm excited about and that's what professional wrestling is all about. Absolutely. That's an incredible card for night one. And it doesn't end there because then we are back on Sunday and starting off with a tag team match, the Greedy Souls versus Destination Everywhere. Um, so the Greedy Souls, how how have they impressed you so far in Red Pro and now going up against Destination Everywhere? Um, so this is an intriguing contest because Michael Oku has uh, stated that this will be their first strong openweight tag team championship defense. Um, I don't know if you saw, but Aussie Open confidently declared that this, their second defense will come on Sunday. So Michael Oku, in the bit of gamesmanship, has said this will be a strong openweight tag team championship defense, and it could well be. And obviously, if it is, then that raises the stakes higher because we're talking New Japan world. You know, um, we're talking about... Um, you know, furthering the eyeballs on both teams. So high pressure environment for all four men. Um, listen, Brendan White, we saw come through the contenders division. Um, 
we've seen Danny Jones and we've seen Danny Jones against Michael Oku in just an absolute war. Um, and that was the second time they competed against each other as well. But the first time in the Revolution Pro Wrestling ring, um, we saw them compete and take Sunshine Machine to the limit. Um, and to me, Brendan White and Danny Jones as a team are the very real deal. You know, I think for a while, Brendan White was looking for the perfect fit in terms of, you know, when you're coming through the contenders division, um, you are looking for the right way. And of course, he was taken under the wing of Doug Williams. Um, and that gave him a, a great deal of guidance. Um, but really, it's teaming alongside Danny Jones around the country, up and down, um, you know, in England, Scotland and Wales, um, you know, it's there where he's really found his niche um, and found a man that complements him perfectly inside the ring. Very, very physical style of professional wrestling. Um, and uh, trust me when I say Connor Mills and Michael Oku wouldn't want it any other way, but they're going to have to be resourceful if they're going to get past the greedy souls because they're lacking, they're lacking um, in when it comes to strength and size, but they do have speed. They do have experience on their side. So, you know, this is one of those matches which you might look at and be like, oh, you know, I wasn't thinking about greedy souls and destination everywhere when, you know, when we talk about these marquee events. But listen, I'm telling you right now, this is one of the, the, the things about being able to run across two nights. We're able to give more people opportunities. Um, and Brendan White and Danny Jones are absolutely deserving of those opportunities. Um, and as we've said time and time again in Revolution Pro Wrestling across our 10 year history, it's not really about the opportunity, it's about what you make of that opportunity. And I can guarantee that Brendan White and Danny Jones will be doing everything in their power to make the most of this chance they've been given this Saturday, this Sunday night um, at York Hall Bethnal Green. So um, like I say, physical tag team contest incoming and it's gonna be a banger. Well, next we have the Southside Women's Championship at Kanji. She was originally going to face at Alex Windsor, who's unfortunately injured. So best wishes to her. But this has presented a big opportunity for either Chantal Jordan or Maya Matthews, who we previously talked about. With this one, I wonder who you think has the advantage because Kanji is not wrestling the night before, so she has the night off. But Chantal Jordan or Maya Matthews, they will at least, whoever wins, know who they're wrestling so they're able to prepare so who do you think might have the edge here well when you talk about experience edge you're obviously looking at kanji but then when you're talking about Chantel and maya matthews um i think that it will actually benefit them so if it was either one of them in a singles contest straight up straight away against kanji um in your call without having had that your call experience without having had those nerves come out your system um you know i feel that they would be at a severe disadvantage. So in this instance, I'm actually going to say it's going to favour them having had that match the night before because it enables them to experience the atmosphere, to experience the bright lights. Um, and to, like I say, get it out their system and prepare fully for Kanji. Now, when you're a champion, people are going to be preparing for you the whole time. Um, and when you are the champion, you've just got to be ready for anyone on, on any given night. And this is no different. And Kanji is like a different kind of animal. She is driven. She is focused. She's not in like, and, and she has, she has in her arsenal. She has um, that again, that killer instinct, right? And she's not afraid to, you know, do whatever it takes to get the win. Um, and she's not going to be, um, you know, the sentiment's not going to be lost on her. She's not going to, She's not going to take it lightly on, on, on Maya Matthews or Chantel Jordan. She's not going to go in there saying, well, this is a huge opportunity for these two young ladies or this young lady that I'm facing, so I'm going to take it easy on her. Absolutely not. Kanji's going to look to run through her opposition. Um, and, you know, just to demonstrate the type of uh, competitor that Kanji is, when we were lining up the match against Alex Windsor, obviously we were saying, should we do a contract signing? Kanji's like, nope. Um, should we get you two on the same card to see each other? Kanji's like, nope. You want a team with her? Nope. Tag matches against her? Nope. Kanji said she wants to let her wrestling do the talking. So originally it was actually scheduled to have Kanji a singles match in London, Alex Windsor a singles match in Southampton. The first time they'd look each other in the eye face to face would have been at York Hall Bethnal Green. And that's the type of focus that Kanji has. She's not interested in feeling her opponents out. She's not interested in sparring. She just wants to go and, um, you know, she's promised that she's going to be a fighting champion. 
she knows what it's like to have injury herself coming off of a long layoff. Um, and we never stripped her of that Southside Women's Championship because we knew that we wanted to unify that championship in the right way with the undisputed British Women's Championship. And whoever comes out on top of this contest, that's the answer. That's the next destination, a date with destiny with Alex Windsor. But in the meantime, it's about being fighting champions. And Kanji fights for a legacy and Maya Matthews and Chantel Jordan fight for their future. It's going to be a very interesting and exciting contest. And again, when we talk about the future, I, I don't want to um, devalue these, these women by saying when we talk about the future of the women's division, I'm talking about when we're talking about the future of professional wrestling, because that's how good all three of these women are. So next up, Andy, we have Luke Jacobs versus Tony Devin, two men that will have competed the night before. And this one promises to be a very hard hitting match, doesn't it? Absolutely, it does. Um, and again, this is the type of contest we're talking about when we're talking about people who, uh, with a point to prove, we've spoken about it when we spoke about their previous encounters. Um, I think this one's got um, fireworks written all over it. I think it's going to be spectacular. I think it's going to be hard hitting. Um, it's going to be very interesting if Luke Jacobs is still the cruiserweight champion, because, of course, we've spoken already about his determination to try and rack up those defences. Will he try and make that a cruiserweight championship defence? Um, if he doesn't, it's still an opportunity for Tony Deppen in terms of defeat the champion. A non-title situation, you almost guarantee yourself a return plane ticket. Win a championship, you guarantee yourself a return plane ticket. And even if you were to beat Luke Jacobs, even if Luke Jacobs were to lose to Francesco Akira on night one, if Tony Deppen defeats him, then surely that puts Tony Deppen right to the front of the queue for a shot against Francesco Akira for that undisputed British Cruiserweight Championship. So whichever way you colour it, this is a high stakes contest between two very, very top end professional wrestlers. And then we have Steve Ball, Mike Bailey, again against Leon Slater, someone who had a breakout match against Luke Jacobs at the 229. And I mean, what better way for Leon to announce his arrival on the main stage than a victory against Speed Ball, Mike Bailey? Like, it really is all Leon's to lose here, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And this is, again, one of those contests which I have. Um... I guess made a reputation off of over the years, um, you know, the young, exciting prospect um, against the world traveled, um, you know, world-class professional wrestler. Um, and, you know, across the 10 year history of Revolution Pro Wrestling, some people have fallen at that hurdle when they get that opportunity against a world-class wrestler. but. I'd say more often than not, people have risen to the occasion and they've risen to the level of a competition which is opposite them. And not just that, they've learned so many valuable lessons. And of course, when we talk about the guys, you know, the guy that springs to mind the most when we talk about those guys that when they're put in those situations, excelled. Um, we talk about Will Ospreay. Um, and one thing about Will Ospreay is he was able to retain um, such a level of, you know, so he'd, he'd work a Matt Seidel and almost like have that superhuman power of retaining some of Matt Seidel's powers, which made him stronger in the next contest, you know, where he competed against an AJ Styles and so on, so forth, you know, and Will Ospreay really has been, a, really has been a benefactor of that kind of mindset of trying to put these young, hungry guys on with the best wrestlers in the world and then, you know, take the lessons they learn and use that to become the best wrestlers in the world yourselves. So this is the first test for Leon Slater, um, and really, it's a second test because Luke Jacobs was a huge test for him um, and he impressed. Um, he couldn't have asked for a better debut apart from picking up the W. Um, but really, I talk about win or learn all the time. And it was such a big learning opportunity for Leon Slater. Um, so, um, you know, I'm excited to see what he's capable of. I'm excited against someone the caliber of Speedball Mike Bailey on the stage of your call, um, you know, again. I feel like some people might think I'm overemphasizing the importance of your call Bethnal Green, but as a, as a combat sports venue, it's iconic. And we look at, you know, all the boxers who've, um, you know, walked through, who've competed 
are in those four walls, you know. Um, I'm sure those four walls have got so many stories they could tell. And I think that a big part of our legacy of Revolution Pro Wrestling is that we've been able to, you know, add professional wrestling to that list. And, you know, the, the world-class professional wrestlers that have stepped into a Revolution Pro Wrestling ring at your call Bethnal Green is endless as well. So the occasion is not lost on these young men and women. And uh, like I say, it's going to be the response from Leon Slater that I'm most interested in, perhaps more so than the win or loss, how he responds to this high pressure situation. Um, and I've, I'm sure he's absolutely going to be looking to impress. And when is Speedball Mike Bailey not looking to impress? Therefore, you know, said it before, said it again, it's going to be a fantastic professional wrestling match. Well, then we have the undisputed British Tag Team Championship. It's Sunshine Machine versus the Velocities, the winners of the Great British Tag League 2022. Uh, but Sunshine Machine, despite being the Tag Team Champions, they just can't defeat the Velocities. So what do you think they're going to be really drawing from on Sunday to try and finally get the job done against the Velocities? Well, it's an intriguing contest because... Um, Really, Sunshine Machine have found themselves in that situation they found themselves in again when they were competing as champions against the challengers at Aussie Open, in the sense of like walking into that contest as underdogs, which, trust me when I say, is something that eats away at them, because we spoke earlier about them wanting to prove themselves as a, the top tag team in the country, in the world. They want to be more than in that conversation. So um, it's a very high-pressure situation for Sunshine Machine and of course coming off of it and we can talk about um, the, the velocities really we have to really move back a bit to the Great British Tag League because mm -hmm. when Sunshine Machine entered the Great British Tag League and they didn't have to enter the Great British Tag League but when they did um, they, uh, they entered as undisputed British Tag Team Champions they knew they had a massive weight on their shoulders um, entering into that tournament um, they knew they'd have a big X on their backs. They were upset by the Lycos gym in their first contest, piling even more pressure on their backs. And that led them into this must-win situation against um, the Velocities, um, because fortunately for them, other results had gone their way, but they couldn't get the job done. 30-minute time limit draw, and they threw absolutely everything at the Velocities in that 30 minutes. It was Sunshine Machine who were pushing the pace. It was Sunshine Machine who felt well, who knew they had to get the, the W? And it was Sunshine Machine who failed to do that. And not just that, in singles competition, we've mixed it up. We've had four Sunshine Machine and Velocities singles contests, all combinations. And the Velocities are four and oh. So how is that going to play into the mindset of Sunshine Machine? It's a, a really important question, you know. And if anything, Sunshine Machine do not have the momentum going into this contest, but the Velocities do. Because not only did they win their block in the Great British Tag League? They also went on to defeat Aussie Open. So both Sunshine Machine and the Velocities have now done it. Both teams know they can do it on their best night. Um, but both teams know that in order to take that next step, they need to win this Sunday at York Hall Bethnal Green more than anything they need to win. And these are two proper tag teams. You know, the Velocities travelled to the other side of the world together. They train together, live together, work together. You know, they are the proper definition of a tag team, but so are Sunshine Machine. And since they refocused, they've been something else. They really have. And they seemed almost unstoppable. And you would have heard me time and time again refer to Sunshine Machine as the informed team in Revolution Pro Wrestling. But that title has been taken away from them. And that title has been handed to the Velocities. And we know how much the momentum game can play in the sport of professional wrestling. And this Sunday looks to be no different. So I'm telling you, it's going to be an interesting, intriguing contest. The stakes are so, so high in this one. Um, and I think it's almost impossible to pick a winner. Um, it's it, it really is. I was, I was going to try and break it down further, but I just don't think I can because, um, you know, there are four men who want this so, so bad. Um, and again, when you have those elements, you have those ingredients, um, it creates the perfect wrestling storm. And I think that's what we're going to see on Sunday. Well, finally, it's a match that 
doesn't really need any hype, does it? Because it's just going to be absolutely incredible. The undisputed British heavyweight championship is on the line. Will Ospreay versus Ricky Knight Jr. This is Ricky Knight Jr.'s last chance here. And we talked before about Osprey, how he has been wrestling all over the world, New Japan, AW, while still carrying the British Heavyweight Championship. And Ricky Knight Jr., like the last time he took that defeat really bad. And now this time he's facing what seems to me to be an even tougher version of Will Osprey. So what do you think will have changed with Ricky as he comes into this match that will let him finally defeat Will? I think mindset will change. Um, I feel like for Ricky Knight Jr., he made... So we look at the two contests that they had with each other, the singles contest. First of all, in that empty arena environment. And Ricky Knight Jr. felt in his heart of hearts he could beat Will Ospreay. But he had that one moment of madness where he put his hands behind his back and let, Ricky, and let Will Ospreay tee off on him. And Will Ospreay is a dangerous, dangerous striker. And that was a big, big mistake from Ricky Knight Jr. And he was made to pay the price. So, you know, that was a, you know, I, I don't think we can overlook the importance of what happened there. Now, Ricky Knight Jr. said he'd learned his lesson. And he said that with the support of the crowd as well, because I know we, 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 it feels like a million years ago um, when we were in that empty arena environment. But the reality of the situation is we've only been in front of crowds for, for 13 months now. We've been back in front of crowds. So, um, you know, I think we we tend to forget what a part of our lives those empty arena shows played um, in our attempt to kind of get back to that normality. But what the wrestlers didn't have was the support of a crowd. And we know how people feed off the energy of the crowd, particularly someone like a Ricky Knight Jr. who just comes alive. Um, and that can be to his benefit and to his detriment because we saw him keep his call in that tag team contest where he was able to pin Will Ospreay with no fans but when Ricky Knight Jr hears the crowd he kind of goes a little bit crazy the adrenaline gets pumping he loses all sense of control and he turns into an animal um and you know I think that is where Ricky Knight Jr is a danger to himself because like I say those important words he's uncontrolled now in that second contest um with Will Ospreay Will Ospreay used some very interesting words he said he survived that contest. He said, no one has ever put him in as much danger as Ricky Knight Jr. And that gave Will Ospreay a bit of a reality check in many ways, because you saw how aggressive he was then against Shota Umino and against Michael Oku. Um, and you've seen how aggressive he was against, for example, a mad Kurt, you know. Um, and I think because of that, that's changed Will Ospreay but it's also changed Ricky Knight Jr. Because Ricky Knight Jr. had opportunities to win that contest, but he wanted to defeat Will Ospreay with his own move. And that led to his downfall. So you'd like to think that mindset's changed. You'd like to think that last chance stipulation has meant that he can't mess around this time. Um, but again, the mindset of Will Ospreay has also changed. So again, like you say, this, this match really needs no introduction. Um, it's two men, two rivals. Um, you know, you've got Ricky Knight Jr., who many people have been calling for a long time, the uncrowned, undisputed British heavyweight champion. But my God, that eats at Will Ospreay. That eats at Will Ospreay so much. Like, how dare you disrespect him with those words? And Will Ospreay is going to be looking to prove a point. He's going to be looking to make a statement this Sunday at York Hall Bethnal Green. So you've really got two of the very best that Britain has to offer, all British main event again at York Hall Bethnal Green. Um, and, and that's something that we've been pushing towards for a long time. And it's been so great to see with Will Ospreay and Michael Oku, with Will Ospreay and Ricky Knight Jr., Will Ospreay and Ricky Knight Jr. free. You know, it's, it's so great to see these, um, these all British, these domestically headlined cards um, and the level of competition in Revolution Pro Wrestling has never, ever, ever been higher. Um, and um, I, I feel that whilst the 10 year anniversary weekend is um, a milestone for Revolution Pro Wrestling, um, it's also just the start of another chapter. Um, and we've seen that through all the people, you know, when we've gone up and down the cards, all those, you know, people who are getting opportunities 
Um, and I'm telling you, if they, if they make the most of those opportunities, like I think they will, it will be the start of another chapter. Um, so, yeah, I guess I've, I've moved on from Will Ospreay and Ricky Knight Jr. already, but uh, it's, it's going to be a war. It's going to be an absolute war. I don't know what to expect, apart from the fact that I'll be on the edge of my seat throughout um, and my heart's going to be pumping, you know, um, like it only can in those main event situations, you know. So it's going to be uh, a great contest to cap off a great weekend of professional wrestling. Absolutely. What an incredible weekend we have lined up to celebrate 10 years of RevPro. Um, why don't you finish off by telling us, Andy, how we can still get to see the shows uh, this weekend? Okay, so first and foremost, be there live, revolutionprowrestling.com for tickets. Um, I know it's a difficult time in the UK um, right now. Um, in terms of, um, you know, attending live events, not just because of the financial crisis, but also because of these wonderful train strikes which are going on this weekend, um, particularly Saturday, Sunday. It hopefully will all be cleared up, but Saturday, I know, is uh, looking like a struggle, but there are still trains running. So make sure you look into it. You can book in advance your trains. Um, London Overground is running um, an irregular service, but it's a service which will get you to your call. And the London Underground is running a regular service. Um, and, um, and like I say, trains up and down the country, they are running just very inconsistent. So check out your train lines, um, trainline.com, see if you can bag yourself a ticket, um, look into coaches, look into buses, carpool do whatever you can to be there um because um i, I promise you it's going to be absolutely fantastic um so be there live and if you can't be there live the next best thing is revprondemand.com um we're looking at um 48 hours after the events to get them up on the brand new revprondemand.com so we've still not had a clean crossover because of some of the issues which i've alluded to at the top of this um so rpwondemand.com is still active but we're encouraging everyone to switch over to revprondemand.com you're going to get a more um, consistent service a higher quality service it's going to enable us to push towards live broadcasts in the future again we've had setbacks which hasn't enabled us to get there just yet um, but um, please switch over. If you're still on rpwondemand.com, switch over to revprondemand.com. You're going to need to cancel your subscription with the Pivot Share service, move across to the new service. We've got a two week free trial on the new service, and that new service um, will enable you um, to have that two, three week free trial, which will hopefully give you a bit of leeway with that crossover period with the billing. Um, so please, please, please check us out. It's the only way we continue to thrive and survive in these challenging times, because believe me, you, you know, you, all you've got to do is look at the amount of shows which are getting canceled, postponed up and down um, the country um, to know what a tough time it is. Um, so please support us please support revolution pro wrestling because i want to be doing this for another 10 years and beyond and that's always been the goal anyone who's ever spoken to me is long term not short term and we will continue to fight through these times um, and but the only way we can do it is with your support so hopefully we'll see you at the matches this weekend at york hall bethnal green and of course don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're watching this on youtube as well absolutely yes hit the subscribe and like the video and share it um, because it all helps one step at a time, baby steps, baby steps. And before you know it, we'll be 20 years old and we'll have taken over the world. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, Andy. And thanks so much for doing this with me this afternoon. Thanks very much, Steph. I've enjoyed it. I've got myself pumped up even more about this weekend and uh, I'm excited. So, so thank you for helping me uh, get myself even more excited. Mm -hmm.